Thank you, Senator Inhofe. Uh, let me now recognize Senator Shaheen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you both for your testimony this morning and for your very good work. Um, Director Haynes, I would like to begin with you because I'm sure you've seen the report in, on CNN today that um, suggests that there were at least two possible incidents on U.S. soil of um, the directed energy attacks that have created um, symptoms sometimes called Havana Syndrome, and a number of our personnel. One of the incidents described here was happened on the ellipse in late 2020, and that's very close to the White House. So it, I'm not going to ask you if that report is correct or not, because I recognize that um, the there has been a real effort to try and keep this information classified. But I do want to ask you about the concern that I have that that kind of clamp down on information that's available to Congress, that's available to the public, has led to leaks. And it's not clear whether the information we're getting is correct or incorrect. And so I wonder if you could speak to that and to what more can be done to declassify some of that information, share it with members of Congress in a way that allows us to better respond? Um, after all, we have to fund operations, and there are a lot of personnel, not a lot, there are personnel who have been harmed who need to, we need to make sure get the care and benefits they need. Thank you, Senator, I, and thank you for your attention on this issue. It's critically important, and it's something that, that I, I know General Barrier, I know across the intelligence community, frankly, leaders are focused on this issue. Uh, on your particular question with respect to information, I'd be happy to look at this with you, to be honest. I think I completely understand getting the information is critical for you to be able to respond to these issues and ensure that you're able to make good decisions. Uh, maybe we can talk more about this also in closed session on these questions. And I think, um, you know, our concern obviously with the classification is because we believe that either it's protecting sources and methods and it's critical to our national security and we'll have to figure that out with you, but you should certainly have access to the classified information and we should figure out if there's a way to help you address these issues more generally. Well, again, I would argue that with stories like this, with stories that have appeared over the last two years, really, and those people who have been affected, who have gone public, that the horse is out of the barn on this. Um, the information is already out there, and I, I think it behooves us all to try and make sure that the information that gets out is accurate and that people understand what's happening and that there is an effort to respond to that. So I would urge you to consider that. And as we're talking about classification, I should also thank um, your office for providing a declassified assessment of the impact of our withdrawal in Afghanistan on the Afghan women. It's something that I requested and I appreciated that we got that uh, yesterday or the day before. So thank you for doing that. Um, unfortunately, it shows that, or it suggests that there is a real threat that faces women and girls in Afghanistan after we withdraw. Um, but I really, in my limited time, I, I want to go to Syria because one of the real challenges that I believe we're still facing there is the detainee camps that have tens of thousands of people, and some of them in the Al Hal uh, camp in northeast Syria. Um, we know that there are ISIS um, leaders who are still there, who are raising a whole other generation of potential terrorists. And the, I understand the Kurds just did an operation there to try and root out some of those ringleaders. But we also, two years ago, um, put into the NDAA uh, a position to create a detainee coordinator to try and help get some of these detainees repatriated to the countries that they came from. No one has been appointed to that position yet, and I believe that continues to be a real threat. And the more we can do in cooperation with 
our allies in the international community to respond to that, the better we're going to address that potential threat. So I would urge you to take a look at that. And if you could report back to the committee about what the plan is for that detainee coordinator. Thank you, Senator. I, I suspect that's a detainee coordinator at the Department of Defense. Is that right, ma'am? It is. Okay. I'll, I'll work, obviously, with the Secretary of Defense, and we'll work through. Yeah. I'm assuming you all talk to each other, so. We do. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Shaheen. Let me uh, recognize via 